بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ونوالا أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى على لسان إبليس في سورة الأعراف قال أنا خير منه خلقتني من نار وخلقته من طين صدق الله العظيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي أمين يا رب العالمين Again I would like to say السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته to all of you uh, and before I can start this important topic and the most often repeated story in the Quran and even it's mentioned in the Bible about the story of Adam and Iblis or Satan, the Quranic title is Iblis. I want to actually start with two disclaimers. First, I want you all to fulfill one sunnah of Rasulullah right now. And that sunnah is actually the sunnah of Ismail. Can you all smile? Yeah, just keep smiling, please. It's very healthy. Um, secondly, my approach will be a ayah to ayah, so I will make sure that I will mention one or two ayat and the explanation of those ayat. But before we can under understand those ayat in a comprehensive way, we have to understand the entire story. So I will going to mention you in a nutshell what the entire story is, which is the most often repeated, as I said, in the Quran. But before I can mention you the story, just one request, do not lost in technical discussion. When I will tell you that Adam and Iblis and the wife of Adam alayhi salam, Hawa salamu alayha, do not ask me that which tree it was that which Adam did not eat from. Do not ask me that what was the social security number of Iblis. Do not ask me those things. Just focus on what Allah is mentioning, what Rasulullah have mentioned, and try to find out the practical lessons from these ayat, inshallah ta'ala. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created jinn before Allah created? Before Allah created? All of us, human beings. And within that jinn, there was one individual whose name was Azazil, but Quranic title was Iblis, and that's what I will use in my speech, Iblis. He was, he was very fantastic in his career in terms of obedience of Allah initially. He never disobeyed Allah initially. He never missed any salah. I'm just trying to correlate with our times. He didn't have any girlfriends. He didn't go to Las Vegas for vacation. He had a fantastic start. But then in the meanwhile, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even created Adam. And actually before Allah created Adam as a human being, Allah elevated the status of Iblis so much so that now he is actually with the angels just because of his obedience. Although he is not from angels originally, he is from jinn. And whenever Allah is addressing in the Quran and asking angels to do certain thing, Allah is not even specifying Iblis separately. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have elevated his status. Some of the angels, some of the Mufassirun said, some of the angels didn't even know that angel, uh, the shayati, shaitan, Iblis, he's one of actually from the jinn. So Allah elevated his status so much. And then Allah created human being. And first human being was Adam alayhi salam. And then Allah said, okay, I have created you. And by the way, did Allah created Adam alayhi salam in the most beautiful way or in the most ugly way? Say it. Beautiful way, right? لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ التَّقْوِيمِ In the most beautiful fashion. This point, just remember this, we'll come to this. And then Allah decided that you will be the prophet, you will be the leader. Allah gave him a religious title, that's leadership, religious leadership, religious title, Khalifa to Adam alayhi salam. And Allah, as a manifestation of the leadership, Allah asked all those individuals who were there to perform sajda, just as a manifestation of the leadership of Adam alayhi salam. All of them perform sajda except Iblis. We know this story, right? Now let's take, I would say, five or six lessons, inshallah, in these remaining 18, 19 minutes, what we have, inshallah. The first lesson we learned, why he did not perform sajda to Adam. This is the first time he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He never disobeyed Allah before. His response in Surah Al-Araf and in many other places, Allah asked, Iblis, why you did not perform sajda? He said, Qala ana khayrum min. Allah, I am better than him. I am better than him. Him means Adam. You know what is this? This is actually the simple definition of ego. Not ego. <laughs> That's waffles. That's ego. Arrogance. That I am better than him. I am better than her. If we have this, it means you have an ego problem. I have a small iblis in my heart. 
You know, psychologists say that they're different kind of ego. Sports psychologists come up with the sports ego. When people are playing sports, basketball, soccer, cricket, and they will score a point or a goal, they will going to do this. Ah. They will try to prove I'm better than you. I scored a point, I overpowered you. That might not be spiritually very devastating, but that's not good at all. Some psychologists came up with that ego destroys the marriages also. There is an ego in the marriages also. When husband thinks he's better than wife. When wife thinks she's better than husband. When you think you are better than your spouse in terms of name, in terms of fame, in terms of look, in terms of wealth, in whatever aspect, means we have an ego problem. And this will destroy the marriages. Actually, one of the big red flags in the marriage, if you are considering someone for marriage, is the ego. If the person have the ego, this is a big red flag for the marriage. Because the egoistical person will never apologize for his mistake. So even after the marriage, if he, did, if he did something or if she did something, and if he or she is suffering from ego problem, then they won't apologize. They won't say sorry. Sorry is very hard for them. Some politicians have ego problem. I don't want to take the names of those certain politicians. You all know that, right? But we discuss about the sports ego. We discuss about the ego in the marriages. We discuss about the ego in the politics. But you know what is the worst kind of ego? Iblis was not jealous of Adam salam because of any of these reasons. Iblis was jealous and he had this ego problem. He thought he was better than Adam in terms of religious sense. Therefore, religious ego, religiously when you think you are better than other people, your religious understanding is better than other people, is worse ego in the Quranic context. And that's very terrifying. That's very terrifying. Wallahi, I have met so many Muslim practicing Muslim brothers and sisters and so many non-practicing Muslim brothers and sisters. The amount of ego, the amount of jealousy which I found in the practicing Muslim brothers and sisters is much more higher than other way around. Because if the person is drinking, if the person is doing zina, they might not be egoistical in a spiritual sense because they know they are doing something bad. This is very devastating. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clean our heart and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to humble ourselves. Ameen, Ya Rab. That's the number one lesson we have to learn, inshallah ta'ala. You know, just compare two guys. One individual is drinking all the time or he or she is doing zina. That's an apparent sin. And one other individual, he is apparently not doing any of these things. But he have this ego, the urge of showing other people that I'm better than you. In terms of his argument, in terms of his conversation, this me, my, I comes. You might think that the person who is doing zina, that's haram. And that is, I'm not saying that's halal. But this person is actually doing more danger to himself or to herself because no one can see he or she is doing sin. Apparently, he might be a good speaker. Apparently, she might be a muhajjibah, the one who takes hijab. But the only one who can recognize that, you, the, the one, that we have this problem is we ourselves, no one else. People might see our appearance, our size of our beard, color of our hijab, and they say, mashallah, that's so cool, that's so cool, sister. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to understand this ayat in a proper context. Ameen, Ya Rab. That's the number one thing. Never think you are better than other people uh, in these regard and being egoistical. Second point, lesson number two. And please try to remember this. Those three people who are taking notes, please make sure you take notes properly. Lesson number two. Allah gave the reason, actually Iblis gave the reason why I'm better than him. He says I'm better than him. Now the natural question comes, why? So he gave, خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَار وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن خَلَقْتَهُ مِن حافظاب تین he said, I am, you created me from fire, and you created him, means Adam, from clay, from dirt. Again, I'm translating this because this is a very important phrase. You created me from fire, and you created him, Adam, from clay, from dirt. What he's saying. This ayah actually tells us the nafsiyat, nafsiyat al-hasid, the psychology, the psyche of the jealous person and egoistical person. How Allah created Adam? In the most beautiful fashion or in the most ugly fashion? Tell me. Beautiful fashion. Allah himself says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ The first comment which Iblis is making over Adam, according to the Quran, is actually, he's from clay, and I'm from fire. 
So according to him, he's trying to find out the negative things, trying to find out the flaws in Adam, which was, according to him, a flaw, although it is not a flaw. You know, when the only thing which you see in other individual is negative thing is flaw, it means that we have a small iblis in our heart. Some people are fail to think positive, to see positive in other people. The only thing which they will see is, ah, oh, he's made of a fire. Oh, he's made of uh, clay and dirt. Only negative, only negative. Their mind is disabled to think positive about other individuals. And this usually happens when you are jealous over someone. When you have an ego problem that I'm better than other people. And you try to prove from your words. Subhanallah. You know, one of the famous scholars from Pakistan who passed away, Mufti Azam Mufti Shafi, rahimahullah, he said something in Urdu, a poem. I will translate one of the, po one of the lines. He says, Auro ki azmat kya jane kam zarf jo insa hote hai. He says, how can you appreciate good in other people when you yourself have a bad heart? As they say in Arabic, kullu ina in bimafihi yandah. The container takes out what it contains. If you have a negative heart, you will only see negative. If you have a positive heart, you will see positive in other people. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our heart positive. Ameen, Ya Rab. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advises about this particular topic so many times in the Quran. Wala talmizu anfusakum. Do not find the flaws of your brothers and sisters. Do not see the negative things. Even if you see negative things, hide it. Do not discuss it. So that's the second point. When you see only negative things in other, it means I have a problem. And actually people do this. So let's say if I am sitting here and one of these speakers will come and he's speaking. Sheikh Majid Mahmood or Sheikh uh, Mukhtar, Hafizahumullah. And if they are speaking and God forbid if I have this problem of I'm better than him in terms of religious sense or in terms of the speaking sense, you know what I will do? I will ignore the entire speech what they will give and I will just sit like this Actually, Sheikh Majid, on fifth minute you said this. Grammatically, it's correct, incorrect. And the tajweed, the gunna which you recited, the gunna is not coming from nose. I don't know where it's coming from. Actually, I, point, I spotted out Sheikh Majid Mahmoud in the audience. So, but this is a symptom of the jealous behavior. This is a symptom of the egoistical behavior. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clean our heart from all these problems. Ameen, Ya Rab. Even in the marriages, remember I spoke about the ego in the marriage? When you only find flaw in your spouse, you do not appreciate the three hours which she invested in kitchen to make biryani for you, and when you will eat and you will say, oh, salt is less, I guess. You know, many times this happens. And other way around examples are also doable. Don't think if they are fair on, you are like Asiya. It means there is an issue in both the sides. So what we have to learn, we have to clean our heart, look at the positives in each other, inshallah ta'ala. Lesson number three what we are learning from this ayah alone. When Iblis said, khalaqtani min nar wa khalaqtahu min teen, that Allah, you created me from fire and you created him from clay. It is actually very true. Iblis was actually created by fire. He was created from fire. And Adam actually was created from clay. So what's so wrong with this statement? There's nothing wrong, technically. There's one thing wrong. And Iblis was very smart, by the way. Where to use what evidence is. The intention is wrong. The statement is right, but intention, motive is wrong. You know, many a times you will be spiritually abusive. You will use Quranic ayat and hadith to manifest your ego. Many a times. This is the worst kind of ego. That's what we are discussing. He said something very true. Allah, you created me. Yes, Allah created him. Allah, you created me from fire. That's true. But he used in a wrong, with the wrong intention and motive. Many a times when in you are communicating with someone and you have this problem, you know how to recognize? When you start playing tennis with the Quran and Hadith. Oh, Bukhari, Muslim. Like that. So Islam just become a source to manifest your ego, to hide your crime. Don't do that. Don't become spiritually abusive. That's the third thing which we are learning. That... Don't use the right evidence for the wrong intention, subhanAllah. The fourth lesson we are learning from this entire ayat of Adam and Iblis. When Iblis says, khalaqtani min nar wa khalaqtahu min teen, That Allah, you created me from fire and you created him from clay. Did you notice one thing? I will say it in English grammar. I don't, use, I don't want to use the word of Arabic grammars. 
Iblis said, Allah, you created me from fire and you created him from clay. How many times you hear the word you? Two times. You created me from fire and you created him from clay. So he's actually using active voice in Arabic grammar by bringing subject twice. He could have said, Allah, the reason why I didn't perform sajda is actually because khuliktu min nar wa khulika min teen. Because I was created from fire and he is created from clay. He did not say, he said, it is your decision that I will be superior. It is your decision that he will be from the clay. How can I go against your decision? In other words, he put it on Allah. That's justification on your mistake. That's a very important lesson we are learning as a psyche of the ego single person. He will never accept mistake. He will always justify and put blames on others for his own failure or for her own failures. Subhanallah. You know the difference between a decent and indecent person? In the same ayat, though we don't cover those ayat, but we won't cover those ayat, the story of Adam will be mentioned, that Adam will do some mistake. And even Iblis have done the mistake. But Adam will repent. Rabbana zalamna anfusana. Adam will come back to Allah. And Iblis won't repent, Iblis will justify. That's a big mistake. Learn how to say sorry. Learn how to apologize. Give a call to that brother or sister whom you are not talking with five, ten years just because of something is stopping you from your heart. You know what is that something? That something is a small Iblis. Just kill that ego and call them. Subhanallah. That's the number, number uh, fourth lesson we are learning. Never justify on your mistake. A decent person will always accept his mistake, just like Adam. And an indecent person will put the blame on other people. You know, if someone asks you if you go late in your office, if your boss asks you why you are late, and if you will say, oh, actually, I'm doing carpool with this guy, and he was late, I was on time. If you are late, and if you know that it's my mistake, except it's my mistake. I apologize. I woke up late. This is a sign of humble person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to follow the legacy of Adam alayhi salam. Ameen, ya Rab. So again, first point was, just to summarize before we can move to the next two, and uh, that's the last two points. First point was, I'm better than him. Never think that. I'm better than her. Never think that. Second, never find flaws in other people. If you are looking at the flaws in a sneaky way, advise that brother or sister, but never only find the flaws. Do not just make this as a job description that I will come into the gathering and my job description will be to find the flaws of the people in the gathering. Third, in the same ayat, in the same story of the ego and uh, the Iblis and Adam, is that do not use the ayat and the ahadith with the wrong intention and with the wrong motive. The fourth lesson we are learning is the justification. Never justify on your sin and on your mistake. The fifth lesson before we can go to the solution, inshallah ta'ala. After these ayat, in Surah Al-Araf, Allah will say, okay, please get out from here. Now you don't have any longer that higher status of uh, with the angels. You are going down in the earth. So Iblis actually gave the entire plan that Allah, now I am... I have disobeyed you. I'll make sure that some of your creation from human being will be distracted. So I will make sure that I will distract them. But I will give you my plan. So please give the entire plan. And one of the strategies which please give in Surah Al-Araf, I want to bring it up. He says, Summa la'atiyannahum min bayni aydihim wa min khalfihim wa an aymanihim wa an shama'ilihim. He says, surely I will come on your people, come on your creation with four dimensions. I will attack on them with four dimensions. I will attack on them from front. I will attack on them from back. Then he says, I will attack on them from right side. And then he says, and then I will attack from, on them from the left side. Now, whenever Allah mentioned in the Quran, left side, it means bad deeds. Ashabu shimal, bad people. Ashabu yameen, good people. You will expect when Iblis is saying that I will going to distract your people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will going to come from the left side first and then the right side. But why he brought the right side first? That I'll make sure I will going to distract from the right side and then the left side. Why I will going to distract your pious people first? You know why? Because that's where we are fooled. If you are in Atlantic City, if you are in Vegas, if you are a party animal, you don't need shaitan, you are one. <laughs> you are on the cruise control with over speeding. <laughs> when you need shaitan, when I will need shaitan, when we are doing something good. That's why Allah says, when you are reciting Quran, read Auzu Billah. 
Allah, why have to read Auzu Billah when reciting Quran? Reciting Quran is something good. Yes, that's where shaitan will come. Shaitan won't come when you are just looking at certain bad websites and deleting web browser history. No, shaitan won't come that at that time. You got the point? So shaitan will come from the pious side. And what is the tafsir of this ayah by the way, subhanallah? Well, the famous companion, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anh, he said that first shaitan will try to stop people from the zikr of Allah, from remembering Allah. If he's failed in that, then shaitan will going to divide Muslims. And how much success we gave to shaitan, subhanallah. We are divided on the basis of ethnicity, on the basis of language, on the basis of a school of thought, on the basis of ideology. There is no way we can be united. Subhanallah. This is a success for shaitan. Leave your differences aside, especially at these times where we are having uh, internal and even external challenges. So we can actually uh, combine this and we can make sure that we can focus on something which is united in common terms. So that's the number fifth lesson, and that was the number la uh, that was the uh, last lesson which I wanted to share. Now let's bring up the solution before I can end, inshallah ta'ala. Though this story, I just want to give you a heads up. I usually teach this story in different communities um, for three hours, the story of ego and jealousy. But I'm, I'm, I'm just summarizing the entire story in the 20 minutes because of the time. What are the solutions? Obviously, there can be many solutions of uh, just solving this ego problem, of solving this jealousy problem in the light of Quran and Sunnah. The first thing, always remember your reality where you came from. You know, in Urdu, it says, Always remember where you came from. What was your origin? That is the key of not to become e uh, egoistical or not to think that I am better than other people. And become humble. Subhanallah, there is no point, no reason why we should be arrogant. You know, if I will give you an example, just a basic example. If you will come to me and you will say, Imam Asif, MashaAllah, Jazakallah khairan, very beautiful reminder. Today you have moved my heart. And if I have this problem, you know what I will say? Oh yeah? That's my job. I usually move hearts of people everywhere I go. Last week I was in Pennsylvania, and the next week I'll be in Boston, then Jersey. Alhamdulillah. I will move the hearts of Jersey also. <laughs> Whatever you will say will manifest your ego or your humbleness. Become humble. If someone is praising you, actually we are being told to ask dua. Allahumma la tu'a khizni bima yaqulun, wa ja'alni khayrun mimma yazunun, wa waghfiru li bima la ya'alamun. Oh Allah, please forgive me. Do not hold me accountable for whatever they are saying. They don't know my private life. In public, I am good. In private, the monster comes out. They don't know. Wa ja'alni khayrun mimma yazunun. And Allah, make me better than their assumption. Subhanallah, if you read those, these duas when someone praises you back, it will never boost your ego. So become humble and know your reality. The second thing which you can do is stop justifying. Stop thinking that you are perfect, you can never make a mistake. Learn how to say sorry. Obviously, don't be pessimistic that you are even taking the blames of other people. But you have to have a balanced uh, um, personality. So learn how to apologize, learn how to say sorry. And actually, let's do this assignment. This is the main whole session 101 assignment for all of you. If you get any benefit from this reminder, this is a reminder for me, and this is a reminder for all of you. You have to call or reach to one brother or one sister, all of you, all of you. You have to call or reach one brother or one sister who is being wronged by you. And don't tell me that I didn't do anything bad with anyone. No. We all are human beings. Maybe you have backbited someone. Maybe you have stabbed at someone back from words. Maybe if on their front you have insulted them. Maybe you have cut the relationship off from your kith and kin. Just call them, apologize them. This is the assignment. Kill your ego. And if you still think, no, no, this is very hard. This is very hard. It means that we have that small iblis in our heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability. This is a Quranic principle. If other people are doing something wrong, even in that case, you have to be good. That's the sunnah of our Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the last thing is obviously, always make dua. That may Allah clean your heart. Uh, Rasulullah used to ask his dua all the time, Allahumma tahir qulubana min nifaq and the dua continues. Oh Allah, please clean, clean my heart from some of these spiritual problems. Always make dua. Because obviously this problem which Iblis had, which uh, the reason why he became Iblis is not because he missed some salah. 
The reason why he became Iblis is not again because he had some girlfriends or pornography addiction. The reason why he became Iblis is because he had something in his heart. And that is ego. You can never, we can never go to Jannah according to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر. أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم. You can never enter Jannah if you have an arrogance, ego of an atom weight in your heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clean our heart. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah gather us all in Jannah al-Firdaus. My time is up, inshallah ta'ala. Hopefully you will enjoy the conference and may Allah gather us again in this inshallah convention. Jazakumullah khairan. As-salamu alaykum.